everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the Queen Amadai Shakur TV show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click the notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur. You can also follow the Queen Amadai Shakur fan page and find me on Twitter at TheGoddess27. Okay, so let's get into it. The cop who failed to investigate Lawrence Smithfield's death expected to be reinstated. Now, according to the WTNH, uh, the independent arbitrator was not convinced that Bridgeport police could justify suspending Detective Angel Lano or Yano. So here's the thing. You all remember when I reported the story about Lawrence Smithfield's, the young black woman who invited over a man that she met on a dating app, a Caucasian man, and then he came by. And then he called and said that she had died or whatever. Uh, and they they said that her death was an accidental overdose. They didn't really investigate the man. They left numerous items at the scene without collecting them into evidence. Uh, according to her family, there was a pill found. There was a, a condom. Uh, there was also um, two drinks, right? Two cups of, of drink. They didn't test it or whatever. And uh, also the family says there was a large blood stain on the sheet. So for someone to have died for an accidental overdose, where'd the blood come from? But so anyway, and then there was also the case of Br Brenda Lee Rawls. Now, Brenda was also found dead, I believe, on the same day. And she, too, had gone out with a Caucasian male. And then she turned up dead. OK, so this this um, officer, Angel, Detective Angel Yanos, you know, he's obviously not going to get any consequences. So they say an arbitrator in Bridgeport, Connecticut, has called for the police detective's administrative leave to be reversed after he and another officer were suspended for allegedly mishandling cases in which two black women were found dead in their apartment. Now, according to the WTNH, the independent arbitrator was not convinced that the Bridgeport police could justify suspending the detective. A grievance has also been filed by the officer's union concerning Detective Kevin Cronin the other officer involved in the uh, in accused of mishandling the case. The families of Lauren Smithfields and Brenda Lee Rawls believe the officers never notified them properly after the Black women were found dead. Now, the decision comes months after Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gan Gannon, uh, Gannon announced their suspension. Mayor Gannon has not commented since the arbitrator decided to allow the suspected to see, uh, to return to the job. The mayor of Bridgeport made the announcement after the family and friends of Lawrence Smith Fields and Brenda Lee Rawls alleged that the city police department didn't do enough to look into the two black women's unrelated death. A Smith Fields' family specifically claimed the reason was at least in part because of her race. Well, of course it was. We know they don't care about when these women come up missing. I mean, there are numerous of black women that come up missing each year. They get little to no media coverage. There's not stories being spoken about it. And then when you see people like Gabby Petito, there's news coverage, not just in the United States. It becomes international headlines. So there's such a discrepancy. Now, Mayor Joe Gannon did not mention race, though when he announced the suspensions of Bridgeport detectives, uh, Angel Llanos and Kevin Cronin, he said, I want you to know that I am extremely disappointed with the leadership of the Bridgeport Police Department and found the actions taken up, up until this point with regards to these two cases unacceptable. That's what the mayor said in a statement, saying that I want to be clear to members of the public and the department that insensitivity, disrespect, inaction, or deviation from policy will not be tolerated by me or others in this administration. And so Smith Fields, who was 23 years old, was found dead in her apartment December the 12th of 2021. According to news reports on that evening, Smith Fields met up with Matthew LaFontaine, an older white man that she met on a dating app called Bumble. Now, police reports suggest LaFontaine called authorities around 6.30 a.m. on December the 12th after waking up to Smithfields on the floor unconscious with dried blood around her nose. She was pronounced dead at 6.49 a.m. According to the chief medical examiner, Smithfields' cause of death was determined to be acute intoxication due to the combined effects of fentanyl, promethazine, hydrox uh, hydroxine, and alcohol. Uh, and the manner of death to be accidental. Now, her family isn't convinced that the police findings thus far tell the whole story. According to the family attorney, Matthew LaFontaine was never investigated or detained after he called the police. It seems as though the police just took his word for it. Of course they did. Of course they just took his word for it. Remember, 
They said he seemed to be a nice guy, as if they knew him. Ted Bundy seemed to be a nice guy, too, to his victim, at least before he killed him. Uh, so did John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer. I mean, what does that even mean? He seemed to be a nice guy. Oh, so he couldn't have committed murder? He couldn't have committed murder? Is that what they're trying to say? Oh, please. So anyway, they say the fact that the police failed to investigate the man that she was found with as a person of interest leaves us with more questions than answers. That's what her family attorney, their family attorney, uh, Darnell Crossland, said. Her family is, is certainly justified in their frustrations with the city. Now, when Smithfields was pronounced dead on the scene, police did not notify the family of her death. They learned of their daughter's death from a note left by the landlord on her door when they went to visit her. How do I get any notifications that my daughter, I'm sorry, how did I not get any notifications that my daughter had passed away? That's what the parents asked. The family also says they believe their daughter was drugged. Her mother told reporters that she found a condom with semen inside and a pill that the family believes could be a sedative. According to the family, Smithfields didn't do drugs, rarely drank liquor, and regularly went to the gym. Now the question is less than the question is less what toxins were in her body, uh, but okay, the question is less what what toxins were in her body, but how they got there. That's what the family attorney said. Now, Mayor Joe Gannum announced this week, this week the city's Office of Internal Affairs will conduct a full and fair investigation into the police's handling of her death. They say there is no tolerance for anything less than respect and sensitivity for family members and their law. That's what the mayor said. I will work with the chief of police to make appropriate changes here and bridge for it. Now, our department's policies um, and about our uh, department's policies and practices regarding notifying family members of a death. Crossland has filed notice that the family will be suing the city of Bridgeport, as they should. And I hope uh, Rawls' family is suing also. Now, they say the death of Rawls, age 53, has received much less publicity, but it bears similarities to Fields. Uh, the Associated Press reported that Rawls, like Smith Fields, was also found dead in her apartment in Bridgeport in December. Also, like Smith Fields, Rawls' death was reported by a man who woke up to find her unconscious. Rawls, Rawls's family also said they were never informed of the death and the police never followed up on it because they don't care. This is just what it is, honey. These things happen to black women. They come up missing, you know, never to be seen or heard from again, even young teenage black girls. And they're just deemed runaways immediately. And even when they're found to have been trafficked, you know, human trafficked, they still will blame them and act as though they're sex workers and that you know, they're not victims, but in fact, they were just out here hustling. This is what they'll often say. So it's just also said, anyway, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about this, because I think the police clearly dropped the ball. And in fact, I think that they just didn't care. And also, I think they were trying to, you know, save that guy, Matthew Lompontaine. They were trying to save him from going to jail. They didn't even take him in to question him. They didn't interrogate him. They didn't collect all of the evidence. Where was crime scene? They didn't send in the crime scene investigators. They didn't think it was suspicious. There was a sheet with blood all over it. They didn't find it suspicious. There was a used condom. They didn't want to test it for his DNA. They didn't get more specific details about him other than the fact that he just met her on Bumble. Why were you there? How long had you known her? How long did you all talk? Did you bring any illicit drugs to the scene when you showed up at her apartment to meet her? Did the two of you do any drugs together? I'm just saying he could have lied, but nevertheless, they should have at least have asked the question. Because often when you interrogate people, you can tell if they're lying, right? I mean, if you're a professional and an expert at doing so, which is what the police are supposed to be, especially and specifically homicide detectives, am I right? And so the fact that this officer, this detective, didn't think that it was important for him to, break, to bring this man into the department and question him thoroughly, nor did they think that certain items left at the scene should have been collected and entered into evidence. Well, that just is beyond nefarious to me. That's not incompetence. That's just an I don't care, cavalier, nonchalant attitude. And basically, it is because of race. Because we already know that if that had been Karen or Amy, they wouldn't have gotten the same treatment. They would have absolutely looked into it, investigated, you know, done a full, thorough investigation, taken the person in for questioning, and they likely would have been immediately deemed a suspect or at least a person of interest. But that wasn't the case with these two women, sadly. 
With that all being said, everyone, please like and share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified it's time the queen goes live. Drop a comment, let me know what you think about it, because to me it sounds purely egregious, okay? They just give us no empathy or sympathy, and just quite frankly, don't care. That's just what it is.